I don't think it's a bit. It says it's a bit, but bit talks. And I don't see a bit talking. It's the false bit. An error bit, maybe? Maybe it's the missing bit. There's always a missing bit somewhere in a computer. Oh dear. Can you hear me now? I can hear the bit now! I have to re unplug and replug the camera every time. <laughs> Welcome to Skypo! <gasps> you might be if you might want to turn your camera on. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not going over uh, Google I.O. We'll do that on Tuesday. Okay. I'm just... Uh... Political bit, ladies and gentlemen. Political bit. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay, first off, I have to ask. Are you in the camp of you want to lynch the Supreme Court justice, or are you in the camp of they did their job, and it's the job of the American people now to do their job? I, I actually don't, I, I'm actually going to give information that many people have missed. Okay. Actually. I just tweeted it. Um... I, I don't have your tweeter up, so I'm not, yeah, I had no, not much to say. I'm going live at tonight's show. Tonight will be a special show on Obamacare. I'm going to go over what the two happy and depressed missed. <laughs> well, first off, it's Obama tax. <laughs> so I'm going to basically, it, it, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. So. Okay. Um. <clears throat> And all I need to do is uh, I honestly think the the liberals are not going to be too happy once the party even stops. To be honest. Well, what everybody was saying is, if they win, a, if the Supreme Court rules in favor, it's probably a political loss. You know, not that I mean. That's not what I mean. Like, not not like, oh, it's going to be galvanizing the, the, the right now. Oh, do you mean when the bill comes to? Uh, no, not that I mean. Okay. Well, wait. Bit's not sharing what's on his mind at the moment, so we'll just let him uh, right. get get around to when he's ready to start, and uh, at that point we will go bit of tonic. Are you recording this or something? Yeah, I started recording the moment you called in. So that's, I, 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 there will be pre-show to for me or somebody to cut out. We don't know what's going on. We, we, I, I haven't been able to get a hold properly of either one of our post-production volunteers to give them anything to post-production volunteer with. So I don't know if that's going to work out or not. However, if we're going to stay all on one topic, I may just push this straight up to YouTube. Assuming I can log into YouTube. Well, I, I'm having to fight with Google Loginer again. <laughs> Keep having to start private sessions to log into YouTube.
got some water though. Something did happen. My shit producer's not letting me in. Until we say something they don't like and they'll leave. <laughs> this topic is a very galvanizing topic for the country. correct or politically correct and we are covering is it Obamacare or Obama tax and the Supreme Court's ruling and apparently our lovable and as always unscrutable bit feels a particular point of this over exacerbated over analyzed and over homogenized topic has yet still been missed despite the over depressed and over happy galvanizing nation as a whole so what have they missed in particular. All right. All right. Let, let's, let's start on, those of you who are watching, I already announced it's a special show. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you got the tweet or, or, or on my video, but if you're watching, this is going to be a non-tech show tonight. Uh, we'll cover Google I.O. thoroughly on Tuesday, but tonight I wanted to uh, go over Obamacare because... I think there's there's you know a whole lot of partying and a whole lot of depressed people sulking, and, and you say so none of them are on Earth. <laughs> and, and I've read so many articles, and many have missed uh, a crucial, crucial piece of information that actually came in the ruling that I think um, will hurt liberals far more. I think once once the partying stops, they don't realize actually what happened in the ruling, and that and that's. Uh, what and, I'm going to get at. And, and what, what, what is the specific piece of information to right. which you are taking because forever to allude to? <laughs> now, now there, do I need to answer if I agree with Robert's ruling? I well, first that, let's say what the piece of information is, yeah. then we'll... Essentially, you know, essentially Robert's turned the, the vernacular of the argument which said penalty. If you read, like, page... The PDF page 13, uh, I believe it's paragraph, what is it? I took my notes. Page 13, paragraph 3, uh, or is it, is it page, uh, yeah, page 13, paragraph 3, it, it, it uses the word penalty. And Roberts basically went on and said the court is not going to get bogged down in labels. In other words, the penalty is a tax. Yes, and I find that extremely egregious, but nonetheless, he made that call, didn't written it. So he said it's a tax. So then the next question to ask is, well, what kind of tax is it? Is it a direct tax? Is it an income tax? Is it an excise tax? Because these are the types of taxes that are allowed. Is, is this what you're saying people miss? No, not oh, yet. Okay. Because I'm going to say everybody's been talking about this all day. <laughs> no. Uh, the... The arguments that I were I was reading, I will concur with some of the few that said that even saying his comparisons like buying cigarettes or whatever is an excise tax, but inactivity is not an excise tax. So his comparisons were ex extraordinarily flawed because you have to actually purchase something or create an, an action of a product. Uh, of I, I, you know, I hate to put you on the spot, but are you going to say what you feel everybody missed? <laughs> yes, I'm building up to it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, what did Roberts do? On page 16 of the, 
opinion that he wrote. This has not been done before. On page 16, he disallowed the use of the Commerce Clause. Not for the individual mandate, but for the expansion of Medicaid. What he did, what he said, stated is that... Yeah, he said the states maintain their authority that the states have, in other words. That, let's talk about what this means, because I have seen nobody, this is catastrophic actually for Obamacare. He basically stated the states can opt out. That means we, we probably have a guarantee of 26 states opting out. But yeah, the 26 states, states that brought the suit up, because the main clinches right. to get the states to comply was that they're going to take their federal right. funding for certain things like other services away if they don't comply, like they do for the highways if you let people under right. a certain I'll, I'll, age drink. Right, right. But now so, they don't have to, but their citizens right. can can't. still be penalized. Wait a minute, they're not going to be penalized. That's what Robert has basically done. He has separated that on this, it's in there, and if it gets challenged in the courts, they will have to yield to the Supreme Court's ruling, which is here on page, basically, 16. And, and that... Uh, so uh, so your, your, page, your assertion there is because the states retain their authority, that if you're in one of the states that chooses not to participate, that you can avoid your federal tax penalty? No, I didn't say that. It's going to cause... A, the goal of Obamacare, which the liberals always want, is mass coverage, correct? Well, that, that, that's how the system funds itself, by having all the healthy people buy... Wait a minute, but hold on, here's the problem. Here's a massive problem. Because the states now can opt out, the, the, they are not going to be penalized. The Before, on the Commerce Clause, they were penalized. The state... Well, I, I, see, on one hand, I think you're kind of splitting hairs there. The oh. states... No, no, think about it. The states themselves will not be penalized, but any citizen of that state will be penalized when they file a federal tax return. Well, you have to let me finish the whole thing because okay. I'm actually going to get to that. Okay. And why it's, it's, a, it's, it's going to be catastrophic. When the states are now not penalized, they won't lose existing monies coming from the federal government. Which means it shoots, it shoots essentially Obamacare much more in the foot. It's more, it's more like shooting them in, the, in, in, in its heart. Because the mandate is no longer a mandate, it's a tax. That's exactly, by changing the vernacular, the means of regulation and the authority under regulation no longer apply. So what has happened, okay, we do have a tax. The, the American people are essentially going to pay more taxes mm -hmm. from them, okay? Now, well, and and if you're right and those 26 states succeed, that would mean right. those right. people will... Okay. If, if the poor which cannot afford health care, cannot get on the rolls of Medicaid. Because the, within the 26 states, they cannot get in the rolls of Medicaid because their Medicaid will not be expanded in those 26 states. That means Obama has a problem. Will he, how will he tax poor people who now can no longer find any type of coverage? They don't qualify for current Medicaid, which the states will keep. But since the states are not increasing Medicaid, where are they going? Where are they going to get insurance? And is a Democrat going to tax the poor? How will they get insured? I mean, don't you love how all of this is just playing out? It'll be one of the most as soon as these people start getting... Well, uh, wait, wait a minute. You're making the assumption there that the Internal Revenue Service accepts the fact that I'm bankrupt as a reason for not paying or doing what they tell you to. On uh, what planet are you living in? <laughs> these people do not accept that excuse. They go, oh, don't worry. We can take organs. We can take your firstborn. We can do things. But, but there's no exemptions in there. There's no exemptions in there. How do they get insured? They're going to be stuck paying a tax, and they can't get on the rolls of Medicaid because it won't expand in half the nation. And also, let's talk about the states that want to opt in, okay? Let's talk about the states that want to opt in on how crazy this is. Because it's labeled a tax, it doesn't really give Obama that much power other than just a tax. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, that's egregious in itself, but I, I want to put all that aside to what the mission of 
this damn thing is supposed to do. And it's actually going to create the opposite effect because of the way the Supreme Court ruled. And there's all these Democrats out there partying like it's, you know, like the second coming has happened, and they don't even freaking realize what just happened in front of them. Well, no, 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 no. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not sure that's true. But why advertise that? Because the shit's not going to start hitting the fan until 2014. Oh, no. All the opinions that I've read, it's like signed, sealed, and delivered. Uh, okay, but at a minimum, the shit's not going to start hitting the fan until January or February oh, yeah, of next year. Yeah. Right. So, so <laughs> now, even if, even if Obama wanted to challenge the states, they would lose because you have legal precedents established. The states can just say, fuck you, Obama. And, and, a little thing, and, and a little thing called the Tenth Amendment. You know, it's yeah. between the two of those. <laughs> exactly. So, Obama, what are you going to do with the poor in 26 states that really have argued and sued you because they can't afford it? They don't know where they're going to get the money to do it, and that was the main reason of the states suing Obamacare. How are you going to now get all of those people on the insurance rolls? And having insurance, they're not going to have coverage because the Medicaid, the Medicaid rules are not expanding. Now, we have a tax, but where is the real power for Obama to execute Obamacare? Because it's no longer in the premise of regulation and then creating a, like a, a penalization of the regulation. Uh, uh, honestly, the real authority is for Congress to say, uh, we're going to set that penalty tax, let's ignore debating over what type of tax it is for a moment, but basically we're going to set that at more than it would cost you to buy insurance, so you're a dumbass for wasting money. That, that's how you force that issue, but like you're saying, in half the states, give or take, if it really does go that way, uh, there, there literally are going to be masses of people who don't qualify and still don't have the money. Which exactly. means they just have to come up with the tax. Exactly. Uh, or, or they can join our lovely surf class in the penal system. <laughs> you know what? I know two states that are using their prison system that way as a surf class where they're basically shoveling the poor into the prison system and basically making them indentured servants to the state. Why should the federal government not get in on that? You know? <laughs> Now, the Republicans are bitching, rightfully, because there is now a tax increase. Essentially, it's a tax, which... Uh, well, tax Republicans hate any tax. Oh, 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 what do you mean? What do you mean there's a, there's a tax now, to pay my tax. salary? That's bad! The of the law. And the law actually states, by 2016, the penalization for not having insurance will be 2.5% of your gross income. So, basically, so, it's a second Social Security slash Medicaid tax... Assuming it stays that low. <laughs> assuming. Assuming it stays that low. All right. So, now let's talk about what did pass to make it in Obama year, which I think is also, because it's, it's not under a, regulata a regulatory auspice, but a tax will also fall on itself. Some of the things that were discussed, like, all right, no, you, the insurance companies have to accept pre-existing. Insurance companies need to keep children on the on the parents' rolls longer. Well, yeah, uh, and you know, to, to, not to quote, but that that particular exemption, I'm surprised nobody ever pointed this out, because it was main, mainly targeted at college kids up to age 26 and so on and so forth. Right. For, for anybody who doesn't know, in the United States of America, it's pretty much standard policy of every insurance premium that uh, children in school up to the age of 26 are automatically covered on mom and dad's premium. So they had that anyways. And now, of course, that didn't stop insurance companies from going in in freshman orientation and trying to sell kids double coverage, which half of them were stupid enough to buy. But... <laughs> no, and, and, uh, it, it's... <laughs> so, let's get into, let's get into the, the, some of the things that sound good. Like, the, like you, you, the insurance has to accept with pre-existing conditions. The states that opt in and increase the roles of, of Medicaid and go along with Obama on this also have a problem. Because the tax that is levied, right? Because the tax that is levied... If they is don't buy the by, insurance. Wait a minute, what that, is created, that is created by the IRS. Here is the backside of the problem because it is no longer backed by the Commerce Clause. It is a tax. 
the, t- the people individually are taxed goes to the IRS coffers. But Obama cannot ship that money back to the states that opt in. Okay? Because it is not required because the, the, the Supreme Court basically stated you have exceeded your, your power in the Commerce Clause, but you can tax individuals. So how the fuck did this just get funding? Well, uh, okay, that, that sounds good in theory. However, once it's in the general fund, good luck. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're going to be spending it on other things. My point of it is is that they don't have a direct route, really. Okay. Uh, d- now, that, name me one thing in federal taxation to end result that uh, has a direct but, but, but hold on. <laughs> As it, what's happening now within New York and California and other states that are in the red that like to participate in federal programs? We you mean the bankrupt states? <laughs> right. Wait a minute. We, we can pretty much guarantee the revenue is not really going to come in to increase to help increase their roles of Medicaid to get the poor covered. So how does how how do those states afford the coverage? Well, they're probably going to re- increase taxes locally, state taxes state income tax, that means the company will probably pay more. But it's always argued that the price now... Or switch states on paper. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, so the companies now are saying, well, you know, it's too expensive. How many companies since 2009 have gotten, have requested waivers from, from the administration saying this is going to cost us too much money, right? So, and, and Obama actually giving waivers to companies. Now, the you mean Obama? I didn't know about this. So if you write Obama and say, "Dear Obama, I want to hire somebody. You know please mean, give me a waiver." It's like writing to the principal. Hi, Mr. Principal. Can I get out of this role, please, so I can go play? <laughs> so, of, of companies certainly are going to say, "Well, gee, it's going to cut into our bottom line. It's going to be too expensive to have people in healthcare. It's actually cheaper to pay the tax." Oh, well, uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the penalty that's penalty. the thing. It starts up like a little roller coaster. First, the penalty. First, the cost of insurance is here, and the penalty is like here. Then it goes here. Then it goes here. Then it goes, and it, it, you know, it's like a juggling. Whether it gets over it or under it, we're not really sure on that yet. But in the meantime, it's like very cheap. So for the first year or two, uh, any gray area, they're just gonna say penalty, <laughs> penalty. <Yep. laughs> so, so if the money's not coming back to the opt-in state. They have to increase tax. The companies are likely, there's going to be a lot of companies likely that they'll say it is cheaper to accept a, a, a penalty. But here's this. Where, where in the law is the penalty applying to a corporation? They could probably use the uh, Citizens United case as saying cor- corporation. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Bit, did you just make an argument for Citizens United increasing the burden on corporations? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> so how is how is the individual tax that has now been authorized essentially? Uh, we're going to have to. We're, of, of course, we could probably assume that the administration will levy a corporate tax if the corporation doesn't, doesn't you know necessarily want to uh, provide a health care plan, so to speak. But I think that is a, extremely a gray area. That but if it increases. If it increases the cost, which companies have already bitched about and said, hey, we're going to, we, you know, we need you to just give us waivers. Well, at that, at that point in time, it's cheaper to accept the, the penalty, which is 2.5%. Now, I don't know if it's going to be, you know, 2.5% of the total corporate uh, amount whatsoever. I, 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 well, you know, it depends I, how they choose to exercise that. Do they just, and there's a number of ways you could do that. Do they just add it to the Schedule C and the self-employed tax and make it a variable and self-employed tax, in which case it comes right off the top regardless of anything else? Do they add it to the other level? How do they do that? You know, it, there, there's a number. It's going to be, yeah. But, but if they accept the they accept the tax, which to me, the tax is hugely cheaper than the premium I pay to my insurance a year. Okay. So are you considering then, joining the ranks of the uninsured and paying your penalty? <laughs> <laughs> so there's these state exchange swap, swaps that they're supposed to go to, i.e. the expansion of Medicaid, to be able to get, to, you know, or find another corporate entity to insure these people. Ben, I have a question. Have you mm-hmm. looked into, because I'm a little gray on this area, um, mm-hmm. have you looked into what your tax obligation is going to be as somebody who is insured? Is your insurance that good, or is it 
are you gonna are you gonna pay a penalty for having you know too good insurance? No, no. I, I mean, uh, I can afford my my own insurance. And, and but you know, yeah, I, yes, I know. But there's a second boomerang in here. You're not just taxed for not having oh, enough insurance, gonna opt out. but you're I'm also taxed, taxed for having too much insurance. Oh well. I don't know about the too much insurance. I'd have to look that up. But yeah, yeah, the the quote unquote as the as the conservatives put it, Cadillac tax. Basically, if you have too good a coverage, it's deemed right. to have value and taxed at that at the overvalue because your insurance is too good. Well, let me let me just let me just kind of go where I'm trying to go with. It. So once the, the for this, we've already covered that. Obama has now a conundrum because the ruling blocks the Commerce Clause, which is the most significant uh, part of this ruling. In that, in that, the the, and I'm trying to, hey guys, I, I'm trying, I'm trying to catch people up on 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 uh, if they missed the beginning of the show. The, the information that most people have missed, and I'll repeat it, is that Roberts shut down, the Supreme Court has shut down the means of the regulatory path to Obamacare, which is actually very devastating for the law. Even though all the Democrats are partying, they don't actually realize implications that have actually happened. All that, they, that has been granted is a tax, but that does not carry with it power, like regulation does. And the, the problem that has happened also is that Roberts included in his ruling that states can opt out of the Medicaid expansion, and guess what? They don't get penalized. That it makes you wonder why all the conservatives are trying to lend Roberts then. Yeah, so so they're, that's a, a kind of a first. Usually with the Commerce Clause, states get penalized. But Roberts made it clear that, that the states will not get penalized and lose existing money if they choose to opt out. So that means you are guaranteed 26 states that have already sued Obama, which brought this to the Supreme Court, are opting out. But, and here's oh, the uh, uh, now, I'm going to ask you a hypothetical. Let's say that happens in these 26 well, states. Well, let me first explain for the people who are, who are watching, and because and, and, I'm trying to re-explain, because I put it on Twitter, and some people are coming in late. So, But, oh, but oh, Roberts has granted the tax. They said, yeah, you can individually tax. So what happens to the poor people in 26 states that now can't find coverage because they currently can't get on Medicaid, okay? They're, they're, they're not on Medicaid now, so they don't qualify. And since those states are not increasing their Medicaid roles, they now won't have insurance. So that means they get taxed by Obama. Can you imagine the conundrum this is going to cause? Poor people now getting taxed by Obama that don't originally qualify for Medicaid, and because 26 states guaranteed will expand the roles of Medicaid because they're going to opt out without penalty, well, they obviously don't qualify for Medicaid. So they don't have insurance. That means they get taxed. Uh, 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 okay, but now, now I'm going to yep. play liberal advocate. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm, uh, 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 okay. Let's uh, liberal advocate. Let's say this your your doomsday scenario for Obamacare happens, and 26 states opt out, and people don't have an option for insurance, so they get taxed. Do you think the reaction of the poor in those states would be a, damn you Obama, or b, lynch the legislator? They're in our way. <laughs> uh, well. It Granted, if they're in one of those 26 states, they're probably not the majority vote, but they would probably get pissed off at the one excising the tax, in my opinion. Um, now, how Obama handled it, hold on. That's it. Close my door. Your game's too loud. I'll oh, well, close the door. Anyways. So, um, it's, it's going to be a massive conundrum for Obama on that side. Now, getting back to the back side, because that Commerce Clause regulatory path has been fractured because of this opt-out, opt-in type thing, monies that are now collected by individuals don't necessarily translate back to a Commerce Clause path to states that opt-in. And so though, which likely, even if even if there is a direct path, the, the states that now on Commerce Clause laws usually get very little federal revenue, and usually like states like California and New York and things like that are heavily in the red, and they're probably have to increase taxes if they want to participate and increase the roles of, Medi of Medicaid by absorbing much more participants in their Medicaid role, which will result in higher local taxations and things like that. 
when that happened, on top of companies already complaining about the costs that Obamacare will cost them, and likely drop and pay the, the pay the tax, quote unquote. Many more people will try to go to these state exchange swaps that, that will either find them another corporate entity that wants to insure them or hopefully put them on this Medicaid branch, right? Which costs, and that in itself, that tax problem, what are these corporations likely to do? They're, you could literally see like what's happening with many other corporations because of the states that are being in the red and high regulation moving to opt out states, which means you're, you're or, you know, forming the corporate location head headquarters in states that are opt out states, and you 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 create a problem now because you have a hybrid situation that is really detracting from the main mission that Obama wanted to do, which is to try to have like everybody covered with insurance. So as as companies move, or even or even uh, you know, just sit. Citizens are. are, are do, do, let me ask a question. Do we have metrics? Uh, I, I, if, if they exist, I'm unaware of them. Of what percent of the 30 million are in each state? I don't believe that the, 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 the 30. I don't believe the numbers necessarily because there's there's like virtual numbers of people who truly just don't want to be insured. Well, that's not an option now. That's now a crime in the United yeah. States with a penalty. It's not a crime. It's not a crime. That was shot down. There is no regulation. Well, I have a question, Bit. If you refuse to pay the tax, it's not a crime. If you're, okay, if you refuse to pay the tax, that's, that's different. That falls under a different set of law. Uh, uh, okay, so your penalty is still jail. You can you can split hairs all you want. <laughs> That's right. I was like, oh no 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 no. You're not going to jail for this. You're going to jail for this. You know. <laughs> now, so now that I've kind of explained some of the massive problems and, and for the opt-in states likely not able to even sustain the the expansion rules of Medicaid. And let's talk about what happens with the insurance, which we already know is starting to take effect. If pre-existing conditions happen, usually insurance companies, what I've already physically seen, are creating new policies where they cover less and you pay much more deductibles. Which you mean the high deductible the, premium policies? Yeah, which makes it even more expensive to have health care. And, and, or just saying we're not accepting you at all, which means that, which, that they cannot be forced to. Also, with, with the same thing with dependents, if it becomes too much of a cost burden, there is, there is nothing... Uh, well, uh, wait a minute, I thought outside. that was what Obamacare was attacking most, saying that it's rent control, they're not allowed That's to right. say no. That's right, but see, since this cannot be exerted via the Commerce Clause, the, reg the regulatory power is evaporated. Because the Supreme Court said in its opinion, so you mean we insurance companies? So, so you mean yeah. insurance companies in the opt-out states can say no all they want? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so if that's true, and these twenty-six states, or even one of these twenty-six states doesn't, I foresee the entire insurance industry relocating. <laughs> well, no, not, not only that. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let me just stop myself. I don't think this is a good thing because I do want people to have health care. Now, notice my words. I want people to have health care. I didn't say I want people to have insurance like the administration is. See, I want you to understand it. Oh, no, bit. let's not put labels on things. No, <laughs> very important. Yielding to insurance is an egregious, an egregious act. It is, the, it is the most catastrophic failure of any comprehension or understanding of how to tackle health care. Let me give you an example. An insurance price for a three-day hospital stay, and I have physical records of this because it happened It happened to me. The hospital wanted to charge an insurance price of $22,000. For three days? Right. And all the Wow, that's an expensive bet. <laughs> now, and all, the, and all of the things they said they provided service for. However, the cash value was only $3,680. If the cash value is $3,000, then where does the other $18,000 exactly. come from? That is, the, that is what insurance does to things in all markets, from automobile to 
whatever. I've always been consistent and have been pounding, you know, and, and, and trying to yell as loud as I can. Redistribution of income, whether it's an insurance company and a corporate or private entity. That, that's a five to six hundred percent extra markup. <laughs> is, 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 is egregious as a public sector doing the same thing. It violates giving every the most people care and the most people quality care. There was an article that came that came out that was talking about uh, like MRI scans and all these other scans that was saying, yeah, the insurance price that is billed out is three thousand dollars at all at, at a wholesale cost for 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 a intern player, which they were saying they get an insurance discount is fifteen hundred. But if you were to go there and pay cash, you pay like four hundred bucks. So it gives us the discrepancy of, 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 of where things are in terms of prices and what we should and what we should be fighting for and be very careful in saying we don't want everybody to have insurance. We want everybody to have health care or access to it. And that shouldn't be through insurance or any type of redistribution system to get there. And, it, it, and I've always advocated the way to make health care cheaper or the way to give health care to everybody is to make it cheaper. Gosh, it's such a simple concept, you know. When we commoditize, when we commoditize things, and 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 marginalize. Well, but things. for that to really happen in the United States, you'd have to get rid of about three levels of federal bureaucracy. Absolutely. And and, Absolutely. and in a number of states, a good deal of state bureaucracy. Yeah. And here's the thing: when I say like it's a few hundred dollars to get that special scan, when something becomes cheap, where we as human beings feel like ah. It's cheap, you know. You tend to like throw it around like a rag doll, and and that behavior increases the quality of healthcare. What do I mean? What do I mean by that? When something becomes, ah, you know, hey, it's it's it it's cheap, you know. Do I need that test? Ah, it's so cheap. Let me just go do it anyway. Had were it expensive, you would double. You would you would rethink and say, ah, man, it's really too much money. I'm probably not going to do that test. But what happens if that test actually is the one test that finds something that and can preemptively stop something? There is where the quality increases for the maximum amount of people. The cheaper we can make healthcare, not through insurance and all this stuff, forcibly fixing prices and all this stuff, like we have deficits in other countries like uh, Canada and Japan and things where there's price fixation. You, you, you are essentially letting the consumer dictate and say, yeah, it's cheap enough that I'm going to go do it. And the, and, and the, the provider, <laughs> which, which says, the scan, the scanner cost me a whole lot, a whole lot of money. At $400, I'm never going to make a profit. Really? My answer to that is... Well, I, I actually, you know, on things certain things, things like MRI machines and other things, the maintenance cost is largely fixed, which means if you do three, if you, if you service more people, you can actually drive the cost down if you just made an MRI standard procedure and other things like that. Yeah, if you serve, if, if, if the, the, if you're, let's probably say you're serve, you're, you have a certain amount of volume of patients right now because your thing is very expensive, you're charging them a, a, a fixed price. I guarantee you at a cheaper price, you're going to increase your volume. So you're trading price for volume essentially to pay for your product if, if that's I guarantee you, most of these hospital But no, no, but what you don't understand is money is evil, and you know, nobody should have to pay for it. It should just be given to them. And and go figure that. Making things cheaper is people with lower incomes more access to services and healthcare. Making things, making things that you know are today are expensive and commoditizing them and making them dirt cheap actually helps the quality of care because we utilize you know, by making it cheaper people are more and more likely to use it because it doesn't offset so much of their income as much and where it was before it's like no doctor it's too expensive even my insurance is only going to cover 60 percent of it i don't have the 40 percent so on and so forth that one scan or that one procedure that one service that is now cheaper they say you know what the hell with it I may not need it, but hey, let's go for it. You know what? I, I, I have a, a, friend, a family friend who's like that. Every damn time any blood is taken, he insists they run every goddamn test they can on it. 
He's like, well, you need, you need more? Take more! <laughs> she's like, he, he will not let them even start filling out the paperwork until they agree to run every freaking test that they're capable of. <laughs> And and so that basically, I, I hope many have already learned now that what the Supreme Court did is not necessarily, a, it, it's actually not a victory uh, in the end when it, when it gets executed. I, 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 honestly, um, the Supreme Court's ruling is a piss-off for both sides. It is. It is a piss-off for both sides. It creates a, an extra tax that actually yields no power. Because the law is now not in the, in the purview of the Commerce Clause, but uh, but it resides in with, okay, you can levy a tax, but the authority now is, has been evaporated because the Supreme Court ruled the Commerce Clause cannot be used, it's exceeded the power, especially for the individual mandate, and states can opt out without penalty. Now, now, uh, okay, to play devil's advocate, let, let's say uh, all the people who wanted to go about this the way Obamacare wanted to go about it stay in power in the next election. Is there any way to get around this limitation with supplemental laws? Not really. Because okay. the, the, opinion, the opinion has it specifically stating your expansion in this act, which was specifically ruled on, the states are allowed to opt out, and you cannot take withhold other programs' fundings because of their opting out. Uh, uh, okay, right? with this now, with this entanglement issue of the way taxation powers have been interpreted, is there really anything to stop any additional Congresses from just kind of going, well, we're going to create a tax to pay for something that we don't have any authority to do, but we have the authority to tax for it, so... It just, you know, that, that, that is something that some people have brought up, you know. So, wait a minute. Congress can just basically tax, 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 and tax for the sake of taxing, even though they can't do what they're taking the tax for? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, is so there any is, way to... If you guys want to read the opinion, here's the proof. The states, however, argue, this is from the Supreme Court, the states, however, argue that the Medicaid expansion is far from the typical case. The object that Congress has crossed the line... Distinguishing encouragement from coercion, New York Supra at 175, in the way it has structured the funding, instead of simply refusing to grant the new funds in states that will not accept the new conditions, Congress has also threatened to withhold those states' existing fund, Medicaid funds. The states claim this threat serves no purpose other than to force unwillingly states to sign up for the dramatic expansion in health care coverage affected by the act. Given the nature of the threat and the programs at issue here, we must agree. Now, I have and, a question. And of Obamacare. Well, no, 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 but, but I have a question. How is this enforcement of coercion different than the enforcement of coercion the Federal Highway Authority does on alcohol tax? The, the, the Supreme Court basically stated Oh, I, 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 I know. Setting aside the Supreme Court for a moment, because well, they, they, well, they're using, they're using, they're citing, they're citing this New York Supra. Yeah, I, I know, but for, but for layman people, that you know, because the closest thing we have to coercion like this is the is federal highway authority yeah, versus the alcohol yeah, tax. Let's say if you don't participate with this federal program, that, but that's usually within one act. We're not going to give you the federal money to build like this bridge. Exactly. They don't yeah. get any federal money yeah. for roads unless yeah. they're complying with the federal wishes of alcohol taxation and aging right. and restrictions. Exactly. So let's reread this. This is this is the devastating paragraph that essentially closes the door of Obamacare. The states, however, argue that the Medicaid expansion is far from the typical case. They object that Congress has crossed the line distinguishing encouragement from coercion. And they, again, New York Supra at 175, in a way, it has structured the funding. Instead of simply refusing to grant the new funds to the states that will not accept the new conditions, Congress has also threatened to withhold those states' existing Medicaid funds. The states claim that this threat serves no purpose other than to force unwilling states to sign up for the dramatic expansion in health care coverage affected by the Act. Given the nature of the threat and the, and the programs at issue here, we must agree. That is it. It is over. 
for Obamacare because they have lost the authority to have the states comply in the, in the expansion of Medicaid to cover the poor, who the liberals argue need insurance. They are going to opt out without penalty, and these poor people, because they now have not, do not have insurance, will now be taxed. How is Obama going to come out of that? It is an utter... Yeah, but that shit hits the fan later. <laughs> After the election. By then we can have the 27th Amendment, which says... Uh, states have to do whatever the federal authority yeah. says. <laughs> yeah, people are so fixated on the individual mandate, it's a tax. It's a ta We're talking about Obamacare. I was saying that this show is, is, is about uh, Obamacare with the Supreme Court ruling. Well, yeah, I, I, I just threw that out there, but really the only way you can fix that particular flaw you're jumping up and down on, like a little monkey, would be a 27th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. You got it. I mean, they're, they're, and, and, and which we basically, it like like we repealed the 18th Amendment, the 27th Amendment would have to repeal the Commerce Clause and the 10th Amendment. Right. So <laughs> if the states can opt out without penalty and you can't expand the roles of Medicaid, how do you get the uninsured insured? You tax them. That's well, how you I mean, insure yeah, them. I, the states hold the reins for, for, for health care. No, no, Ted, Ted, you roles, don't understand. You don't understand. See, you you tax them, and that's Here's how you insure them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, 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 the, the Democrats are so were so excited, but the, I, they didn't win anything other than a tax. That's really not going to translate to people getting insured. And then you can argue, well, Mr. Bitt, the the other things like buying insurance across states and pre-existing conditions and, and uh, holding dependents longer. The insurance companies have already responded to that. They're already creating new plans or denying coverage altogether. Like if someone comes to if someone comes even to, to being an employee and they have they have the insurance. The insurance now under Obamacare has to accept your pre existing conditions, I guarantee you at renewal, they'll say we're done. And then the insurance is gone completely. From everybody that's what happens with private industry. You can't, you can't just force all this other stuff. I don't think I actually have to explain that kind of thing to people. I hope you assume that. No, 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 no. He specifically said everybody who likes their insurance gets to keep it. He said that. So it's like I hope that's already an understood thing. The insurance companies have already responded, and they've, they're coming up with new plans like high deductible and things. It's going to be like... Well, and, and, and you know what? Let me use a better analogy for the people watching. Anybody in the United States, if you've noticed how your bank suddenly just doesn't have the account they used to have, and they now have a new account for you, which comes with a bunch of penalties and fees and, and other things, that's basically what... What most people are expecting the insurance companies to do now, if, if they if they do take the higher risk, which is now if they relocate to states that opt out, if they do opt out, they may they very well uh, under those states' laws wouldn't necessarily have to do. But even if they do, they're just going to get rid of the affordable policies and replace them with um, not affordable policies, which delegate that risk around. <laughs> right. And here's what I want to get into. Here's what I want to get. Into. Here's another, here's another aspect that really hasn't been covered. I actually kind of, I, I hope one side effect comes from this, and that is the removal of employer-driven health care, or benefits. I shouldn't say employer-driven health care. Employer-driven benefits in, in the access to health care. That was established in this country, those of you that don't know, during World War II when Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, created a pay freeze. In other words, you couldn't get a raise. So and, they gave uh, benefits. That's right. And so the way companies, the way the companies did during this pay freeze, to attract people from company A or whatever, or to get them, you know, out of the chair and, and to make money uh, at their company versus another, would be saying, "Hey, we'll pay your hospital bills and all sort of stuff." And that's how the tradition started. Yeah, because uh, before that, you just gave people more money and let them decide what to do with exactly. it. Exactly. That's what I actually hope this does do. I, I'm actually, you know, I've heard Republicans 
get afraid of that and defend it. I, I'm, I actually like the idea of escaping employer-driven benefits. Hey, well, I, you, you know what? That the one thing a Republican and a Democrat have in common that they will never admit is they're mm -hmm. scared to death of the American people doing things for themselves. Both of them are. Because they're like, wait a minute. Do you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah let, me, let me explain why that would likely happen. There's several reasons. One, companies are already bitching about the costs. So they're saying we're going to opt out and not have insurance. And they would rather pay the fine. And then people will have to go to the state exchange swaps or whatever. Um, two, basically, if someone comes on with high pre-existing conditions and there's an existing insurance, the insurance, the insurance can basically... It depends on the contract with the company, but they can guarantee they won't renew the insurance. And the company's not going to want to deal with always having to... It's Switch. Because it is very cumbersome for employers to deal with insurances now that, because there's pre-existing conditions, will just altogether drop the program, which is not illegal under... Uh, 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 no, but I have to ask you this. If it's a condition that is not covered by the Americans with Disabilities Act, would there be anything wrong with an employer oh, going, we can't afford to hire you? The Disabilities Act is a, is a, is a, yeah, is a, is a different provisional... Well, no, 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 but bet. You can't discriminate against a handicapped person. You can't, like, refuse to hire them because they're handicapped because of the American with Disabilities Act. But there's a crap load of medical conditions that are not covered by the American with Disabilities Act, and with the situation you're talking about, hiring somebody with a pre-existing condition could force, could put the company in a position to lose the insurance for all their other employees. Absolutely. So they, they right. could, could you see this being part of the hiring policies in America, where everything that there isn't a discriminatory law against, you're going to ask, you're going to well, sign, and you're going to go, I can't hire you, you have this Why? condition. Well, yeah, this is answering your question. This is my reasons when I was... I'm enumerating my reasons on why it is likely we will no longer have employer-driven benefits, which I think is a good a good thing. Um, what so you know they they will drop it for that reason, which was the pre-existing conditions. The other thing could also be for the dependents conditions, right? There, any any one of these provisions that Obama has put under the law that he, he is making by law for the insurance companies to do, the one thing he cannot stop from happening is the insurance companies backing off altogether. Now, will the insurance companies make money even if they back off? Of course, because they'll have plans that will introduce different risk levels. Plans and I hope, plans. I hope they'll start to offer to us individually. And we'll go back to having higher paychecks and getting more money now and actually <laughs> being able to choose what we want. I hope that's a side effect. Now, I had stated before, I don't know what, 15, 20 minutes ago, I am not a fan of insurance. Insurance to me fails altogether. The way you solve health care problem is not giving it to the insurance company or the government. It's simply to make it cheaper. And I think, Rusty and I, I we have a show on YouTube where I enumerate in detail how to get there. Like separation of pharmaceutical company relationships with doctors and, 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 and blank prescriptions. And, and you know what? Classes. I don't even remember what video yeah, it is at like, this like point. Like general prescription classes, different, different fixed costs, like for now, physician's assistants can start uh, prescribing and deregulation of certain practices and things like that, giving more choice. Those that want to go into medicine don't have to go necessarily for seven years and can treat a certain class of preemptive medicine. Of course, specialists have to go and you pay you pay more. But guess what we've done? We've, we've shifted a whole lot by deregulation of the doctors, separation of pharmaceutical, doctor relationships, um, that, that, that you, you basically, and I'm very, I'm very generalizing, we went into specifics on one of our I, I could have sworn it was one of the up all nights, but I don't. Yeah, know. it was an up all night YouTube video because I, I, it's too long to explain. Uh, Again. Ways to make healthcare cheaper. There's just so many numerical ways of making health healthcare cheaper. But uh, the, I, I'm just saying, for now, in the transition, the transition, and I think it could. If we go to individual insurances, I think we will eventually transition to needing insurance less and less. The goal of healthcare should always be, the, 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 I guess the, the pinnacle dream of the best healthcare would, would be a healthcare that doesn't need to be subsidized or insured. 
because that means it but good it costs so much yeah. <laughs> because that means the price levels are there for to, to get the most people with the highest quality and, and the most participation within the system uh, but in the transition to that I will give you an example of my insurance that I have I have a health savings account an HSA and when I first tried it my wife was scared to death she's like what what is this? You're going to go on an agent and say, what? I want my PPO and HMO and blah, 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 you know, all this other stuff. And, 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 I, and, I, and I looked at her and I said, I did the math. You know, I don't oh, know no, 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 bet. Never do the math. Yeah. <laughs> I, it was, I, I was a little scared because like, you have that emotional, you have that emotional uh, clinching. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, what happens if I get very sick and I need all this other stuff and blah, 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 blah. And, and so I did the math with the HSA. And I went to my wife and I said, honey, we're paying about $6,000 a year for a premium to insure the whole family. And I said, you know, you and I visit the hospital every now and not the hospital, but the doctor every now and then. Uh, you've had, we've had three baby boys. You take the uh, kids once, you know, twice yeah, a year. You know, we take the kids a few times and that. And we added up the costs that we could see, even at the insurance prices, which we know are inflated. And we spent about, on average, 18 Hundred to about uh, eighteen hundred to about twenty three hundred dollars. So that means what? You were paying six thousand dollars to save eighteen hundred bucks. Yeah, and not only that, not only that. If I had a catastrophic event, I still have to pay a deductible, which is about fifteen hundred dollars, right? That I, 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 I think maybe it's gone up, maybe three thousand dollars. And then on top of paying three thousand dollar deductible. I, I have to pay 20% of the total bill because I want to cover 80%. So I did all this math, and I'm like, honey, on an HSA account, I can put all the money that I was doing to the premium into our health savings account, and it's my money. I get to see it at the end of the year because if I give the money to an insurance company under my normal PPO, and I only use 2300 of it, do you think the insurance company gives me back all that money in difference? Well, no, no that, that's the real it's reason a lot of people who, a lot of people that go 10 years plus without having an auto insurance seriously look at shelf insuring because they get the bonds back. It, 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 it's, it's insane. So my wife was like, wow. But she was like, what happens if we have to do this and this and this? Well, our HSA actually had a, has a very high deductible, which I think is $5,000, okay? $5,000 is still $1,000 less than my $6,000 premium as a deductible. And then after $5,000 of my HSA, which I call gap insurance, 100% is covered. So with one child that we had, my, my latest child, who is now one and a half, we paid $5,000. Nice. Okay. And uh, the rest of the year, my wife was had 100% coverage. She could go to hospital again, doesn't matter, 100% coverage. Because we paid the $5,000. Well, Mr. Man, that's a hell of a lot of money. Okay, well, your PPO deductible, what is it, $1,000, $1,500? And your, your, what, pregnancy, a pregnancy stay at the hospital, I don't know, what is it, come around, probably. Well, you'll be, you should know this. You just had a kid. Man, huh? <laughs> You should yeah, know this. Remember, you just had a kid. I, I, I'm trying to remember what it was. It was like, uh, 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 I don't know, let's just say $28,000 or something like that, right? Well, wait, wait, wait. It cost $28,000 to have a baby? <laughs> something like that, I don't remember. I don't know what it was. It was well, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a fucking minute. It costs almost thirty k to have a baby. Well, you don't, look, like that's what the hospital charges the insurance company, I guarantee. I guarantee. And if it was a cash value, of course it'd be a lot less. But insurances are paying a hell of a lot more money. But let's say what the insurance says is the bill, which they inflate the price, okay? Uh, you know, you're going to be paying 20% 20 per, 20, 20 of that total bill. But let, let, because let's, the hospital charges you something, your doctor charges you something, if a specialist is needed or if you get you get your epidural, they charge you something, any other damn service, because they're all billed separately. If any of you have ever, you know, you, you go to the hospital, you, you get these separate charges, you get the hospital, doctor, you know, physician, nurse stuff, any other type of service that comes in and makes your total bill, 
right? And and you'll pay you pay twenty percent on that. So I've saved a hell of a lot of money on the HSA for a catastrophe essentially because I have a high deductible. The things where where it's it's not as powerful is if you're on a prescription drug thing. I don't think we get as much coverage on on, on a prescription. So uh, basically, you you're know, screwed uh, if you don't switch back over before you become a senior citizen. No, not necessarily because the senior citizen we all you know we don't get insured at, at, at 65 or over. Take a look. No company out there insures you if you're 65 or over. Go take a look. You can't get a plan. The only way you can get a plan without Medicare is to get a traveler's insurance, which they do annually. And it's very expensive. Believe me, I know this because I, my mother-in-law is a permanent resident who is 65 years old, but she hasn't stayed here long enough or worked here long enough to qualify for Medicare. How do we insure her? We have to get traveler's insurance. Oh, because I, I looked, I looked at every freak, just like, like seven private insurance companies. How can I insure her? Oh, we don't, she has to pay on Medicare. She doesn't qualify for Medicare. Do you, will you insure her? No, sir, we don't have a plan. And one of them finally read me and said, well, you can use, no, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're go. <laughs> oh. He's such a loving oh. parent. Yeah. Okay. And, 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 uh, you make me lose my train of thought. <laughs> insurance, and old people. One of the insurance companies advised me and said, you know, there is such thing as travel insurance. And sure enough, we went and found it, and it's, they go, they go yearly, and that's it. And uh, so that's what we had, you know. The, the, those, those were the routes that we that we had to, to go to for for uh, insurance. And and the, you know, getting you know, getting back to the HSA, I love the HSA because we found so many times now procedures that were tacked on, like if you were to go in for a certain illness or whatever, and I and I and you start to ask. What were those procedures for? And you know, so many times the doctors say, oh, 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 you don't need those. And they would remove it. And I go, well, why were they on there normally? Oh, because the insurance companies, you know, we usually do this and they'll, they'll just pay and they get it done for these, but you really don't need it. So what I just said is that you're charging these three procedures at a waste factor that insurance companies pay and somebody's profiting from this. But I, as a consumer, because I was smart enough, basically said, Wait a minute, I don't need this, this, and this, and this, and you already told me as a doctor they're not necessary, so I don't need to pay them. I just made healthcare cheaper. And, and, and Well, that's released, stupid. <laughs> I, I just released resources for other patients that could need those those types of tests. And, and... But you you don't understand. People? The way you cover everybody is by sticking as many things as possible to the evil corporations. <laughs> and, and what is my main... And if you actually come from a being from a puppet of healthcare to a consumer of healthcare, you become an aware consumer. And by being an aware consumer, we can start individually driving the price of healthcare down. Uh, 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 assuming, of course, bit that you have an immunity so that your brain doesn't implode as you become this consumer. Because honestly, if you become aware of just how much, what the frick waste there is in just about every frickin' step, you will honestly feel your, your bottom of your brain reaching up to strangle the top of your yes. brain. Yes. <laughs> Us as individuals, not companies, because I do really want employer-driven benefits to go away. And us as individuals, even those with pre-existing conditions, there will be a threshold. You know what? You have this, and you are a certain risk. You'll pay this, like with anything else. You'll, you know, you'll pay this much, uh, and we're going to cover you, and you'll, and you'll end up paying this much. And the more we get smarter, those with pre-existing conditions. We'll have to pay less and less and less because we're dropping the price of healthcare and forcing things in and becoming smarter. I mean, us as consumers are so smart with some things that are so frivolous, like what clothes we wear, but we ignore things that are super important to us, like our healthcare. And and the more educated we get, we will slowly minimize the role of insurance to where insurance exists where it needs to be, a gap. 
which is usually going to be the catastrophic things where the bills are if so insurmountable, you either get a loan to pay it, or in other words, the insurance actually acts as a loan in that, in that effect versus what insurance is doing now. Because insurance right now are dictating prices, they're dictating services, methods, all kinds of things that needs to be retracted that are making healthcare very expensive. So if we minimize that role to where insurance accepts less risk, they're, and they're pleased to do it because they'll make a lot of profit on it. They'll get, a, they'll, act, they'll essentially act as a bank that will loan out for those catastrophes. And everything else becomes a priority to you, the consumer. And you will start making decisions because it'll be as cheap and say, well, you know what, this month, I'm gonna have to visit the doctor. Maybe I don't get that iPad uh, this month. You know, maybe I'm not gonna, you know, uh, we're not gonna go to the beach this weekend or something. It becomes one of those priorities that you participate in. And that should be the goal of healthcare. To make you guys smarter, to cover you, to make things cheaper, because I guarantee you, passing the buck from private insurance companies. But did you just make a case for system. education being one of the prime pillars of an improved society? <laughs> it's just, it's just. <laughs> And that's how you do it, and that's how we gradually do it, because you can't do this knee-jerk. Of course, there's people that are dependent on medication, and that's why I'm saying. I hope it becomes individual, because it will be a gradual effect, still keeping people that are really dependent on things to slowly embrace an individual mentality and, be, and slowly become that consumer, while still appeasing their emotional fear of, of you know, drastic change to eventually yielding the minimization of insurance and actually obtain cheaper health care. And, and, and I think that, you know, that, that's what we should look at. So that's, that's, that is my, has been my rant, and if you come in the show late... You just kind uh, of have to watch it on, on, on demand or on YouTube. I've repeated it two or three times on the information that people have missed, and whether they're the ones that are partying or, or, or whether they're the ones that are depressed and sulking in a glass of scotch. Uh, you'll have to uh, watch it on either live stream or YouTube. Or it's that. You know, this I one, think, I, I don't think, think I... I... Somebody wanted to call in. It was PC Matt wanted to call in. Or okay. Um... But I'm done with my rant on that. And I hope people were informed. Um, it's not really a victory uh, for Obama. It's not a victory for anybody. Everybody got, pretty much got pissed on because of the way it was ruled. The way the ruling came down. You no, know, I find it funny such a that it's like. Way, a, 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 and it doesn't really help anybody. Just, oh, no, I know that that, that, that that is honestly the thing I find funny. Both sides are trying to lynch the judges, and I'm like, it, what, it, he did it. <laughs> I know, it's, it's amazing that this one paragraph, this one paragraph. The states, however, argue that the medical Medicaid expansion is far from the typical case. The object that Congress has crossed the line in distinguishing encouragement from coercion, coercion, the New York Super at 175, in the way it has structured the funding instead of simply refusing to grant the new funds to states that will not accept the new condition, Congress has also threatened to withhold those states' existing Medicaid funds. The states claim that this threat serves no purpose other than to force unwilling states to sign up for dramatic expansion in health care coverage affected by the act. Given the nature of the threat and the programs at issue here, we must agree. And that, my friends, you'll have to rewatch the video, is the linchpin that essentially, when this hits in practice, will be the undoing of Obama. Because Obamacare has lost its teeth. It is no longer regulatory. All that has come of it is just an individual tax that cannot really exert or, or use a commerce clause for coercion. Or, 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 no, I don't want to, I'm sorry, not coercion, but um, encouraging or incentive. And Obama is going to have a hell of a time with the 26 states that have already initiated the lawsuit and others that are saying they're going to opt out because there's no penalty now of expanding the Medicaid rules to those now that can't qualify Medicaid and can't afford insurance, how will they now be insured? They're certainly going to be taxed, but they can't get the insurance, because now Medicaid will not be expanded in those states. And it's a, it's, it's a terrible conundrum that, is, that, is, that has come about in this ruling. And I was shocked that the celebration, I thought everybody would hit this. And uh, it's been overlooked in all the partying.
Oh, uh, they'll realize that later when they start taxing people and the poor complain about their tax hike. You know, those those evil poor people, they just complain. They don't understand I, I, I what we're doing. I think it's catastrophic because I want people to get in you know, to, to be able to find uh, health care, to be able to get health services. But this is a hell of a thing. You, he's going to tax people that really that he wanted to help originally and that now are not going to be insured because they can't qualify for existing Medicaid and those states are not going to expand Medicaid, so where do they get insurance? They don't. And they get taxed because they can't. So is Obama going to withdraw the tax and start now making different class taxes? Things, I guarantee you, that will cause another lawsuit. Oh, now you're doing... Class warfare. Well, now, well, now you're doing a, a, a certain tax that is discriminatory. Not well, but all tax. tax is discriminatory. Well, we well, have a step basic. tax system. Wait, 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 wait. That's the income tax is discriminatory. But you're t this is not part of income tax. We actually don't even know what tax this qualifies for. We are still asking um, uh, Justice Roberts which tax enumeration does this fall under. It's not a direct tax. It's not an excise tax. And it's not an income tax. It's a government tax. Isn't that enough? <laughs> but that's not enumerated because... <laughs> I'm sorry, the Tenth Amendment doesn't extend that far. I know. That's I don't know how they're going to do it. I, that, that was the idea. What type of tax? That, that was the idea behind the U.S. Confederacy, and there was a reason that didn't work because without a central federal authority, it just the states did the colonies did not cooperate with each other. We tried that. We tried having thirteen independent nations with more power than the central federal authority. And it, it didn't work. <laughs> I mean, it, it's ruling is so weird. It, all it really did was just create a tax that will likely get challenged because it's going to have to. It's going to have to have discrimination. I guarantee you. Let's say Obama uh, gets elected again and all this. Well, no, 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 no. According to the judge you're quoting, mm -hmm. this tax cannot be challenged. Well, wait a minute. No, he's saying, no, not not the tax itself, how it's implemented and how it gets executed, and certainly because it, the servicing of a tax can actually be challenged. The existence of a tax doesn't necessarily... necessarily no, but he's, it, it, there was like a, there was a, st a point in that where they specifically went into that and said, you know, basically it, it, uh, this tax, in terms of challenging it as a tax, is not considered a tax, but it's considered a tax for the purposes of making it constitutional. It's just going to be very strange because they want to try to make it regulatory. That's already failed too because the Supreme, Supreme Court stopped the. the you, you know, but I honestly want to know what's going to happen if in 2014 half plus of the American people just refuse to pay the penalty tax. Yeah. Uh, is the United yeah. States government really willing if the American people in mass refuse to pay it to lock us all up? I don't think that's going to happen. You know, I don't know if there's going to 
<laughs> but if you know what, if but you know what, if, look, maybe all this may be moot. I mean, perhaps Romney gets elected and the Senate. Oh, uh, you know what? Even if that, even if that crap happens, do you know what it took to get this thing passed in the first place? It's gonna take that and a quantum leap to get it, uh, to get it undone. If Congress, if Congress is all Republican like it happened in the '90s, you know, stuff, stuff could certainly get done. They could obviously change the role of the tax. There's a lot of things that can happen that you know Congress can certainly do. Uh, I don't think they're going to change any of the private insurance thing, and they shouldn't because the insurance companies are going to respond on their own anyway. You know, they're just going to create. They're already responding, so that doesn't even need to take place. So. Uh, okay, we're right. at about an hour fifteen right yeah. now. Is there anything else you want to say on this, or do we kind of want to stop there? No, nah, we're going to probably stop the show because my son's begging me. I, I promised him to we hang out. But anyway, that was my point and. Don't take my opinion as oh you know I'm not I'm not Republican on this I'm not Democrat on this I'm, I'm, no you're Libertarian I'm, on this <laughs> I, I, I want people to be touched and if you're late to the show rewatch the show it'll be archived here uh, and also be on YouTube for the rest to get to that At some so, point. <laughs> thanks for thanks for watching guys and thanks for listening on the podcast uh, you know I can't do I can't do what's his name's voice. <laughs> I wonder if you get mad at us if we just dubbed it in. <laughs> you probably would. We shouldn't do that. Okay, peace out, all. <laughs>